this is unit six, quads and polygons, lesson 6.4, trapezoids and kites. Trapezoids and kites. You should be right here, again, recording the date, time, and location that you are doing this. And don't forget a parent or guardian sign-off. We're going to do a review problem here. I'm going to set the timer for two minutes. You're going to finger track and read, underline, highlight, draw a label list, and ask yourself if there's any have me do here. Find everything possible. I'm going to give you two minutes. Do this on your own. Ready, go. All right, let's see how you did here. It says draw a square P2RS with diagonals PR and QS. And at the length of PR is 12, find all possible segments and angle measures. Okay, so PQRS, PQRS, and you're supposed to draw in the diagonal. SQ, and then PR, and PR you were told was 12, and just using that, you're supposed to find as many angle measures and segment lengths as you can. If it's a square, instantly all four sides are equal, and you have four right angles. That's the rhombus and the rectangle marriage right there. You got the right angles from the rectangle and the four equal sides from the rhombus. And also because of the rhombus, these corner angles are cut in half, which means 90 divided by 2. You should have had 45, 45, and that's going to go all the way around. And because a square is also a rhombus, we have a right angle here. And we have these lengths. The 12 is cut in half because it's a parallelogram diagonals bisect. That's 6 and 6. We have a 45-45-90 triangle going on right here. The legs are 6-6, six, six, and you should have 6 root 2. And that is how you squeeze the sponge. So when you're given a square, you're given a whole lot of information here. Okay, now we're going to shift. We were working with what's called the parallelogram family. Now we're going to shift to the non-parallelogram quad family.
main terms, trapezoid, medium, and kite. So the parallelogram family included rectangles, rhombis, and squares. And then we have a trap. Trapezoid. I'd like you to just look and I'd like you to list at least two things. How are they different? Fill that out yourself. I'm not going to fill that in for you. Ask yourself, how is that trapezoid different from a parallelogram? Write your own sentence there. I'll wait about 30 seconds. It should be obvious. Okay, let's talk about what makes a trapezoid a trapezoid. A trapezoid, by definition, is one set of parallel sides and one set of non-parallel sides. Now, those parallel sides, those are called the bases. And the non-parallel sides are called the legs. Now, you need to realize base does not mean bottom. Because I could rotate this, and I'd like you to draw this. I have a parallel. Those are my non-parallels. Even though these are rotated, these are called bases. The parallel sides are the bases. And the non-parallel sides are the legs. I'll give you a few, few seconds there to draw that. So base does not mean bottom. Base means parallel, whether it's horizontal or vertical. So the only thing you need to have a trapezoid is one set of parallel lines. So this image right here is a trapezoid. Now, the descendant of a trapezoid, notice we have a set of parallel lines. So that's a trapezoid. But in addition to the parallel lines, the legs are equal. So we call that an isosceles. Let's, let's spell this correctly. This is an isosceles trapezoid. Couple qualities. The angles connected to the bases, the pairs of angles, so the blue here and the pink, those are called base angles. Base angles. So there's two pairs and they're consecutive, they're right next to each other. And in a trapezoid, the one base angle from each base, those do add up to 180 degrees. But careful, this is not a parallelogram. Opposite angles are not equal. In an isosceles trapezoid, because I have two equal sides, that means these base angles are going to then also be congruent to each other. Again, not across from each other, but next to each other congruent. That's an isosceles trapezoid. Let's take a closer look about a quality of a trapezoid here. Okay, so we have a trapezoid, and we have our one base A to B, and we have our other base D to C. Those are the bases. 
and it says we're going to mark E as the midpoint of A, D. So E is the midpoint going this way of A to D, so hatch marks. And F is the midpoint of B to C, so double hatch. I'd like you to trace and connect E to F. We're connecting midpoints. E's a midpoint, F's a midpoint. In a trapezoid, when you connect the midpoints, that segment has a name. It's called a medium. It's also sometimes called a mid-seg mid-segment of the trapezoid. Now there's a relationship here between the bases. Let's take a look. The base length of A to B, let's bunny hop that. Ready? Right here, bunny hop it. That's one, two, three units. So A to B is three units. Now let's do bunny hop the D to C units. So start at D and bunny hop. That number right there. You should have gotten nine. I'd like you to average A, B, average, and DC. I'd like you to average that. Remember to average, we're going to add and divide by 2 here. So we're going to add 3 plus 9 and divide by 2. We're averaging. It's going to be 12 divided by 2 and of course we get a 6. Now I'd like you to go above and I'd like you to bunny hop the length of the median, E to F. Ready? Right here, bunny hop it with me. Did you notice that the median equals six units? Therefore, the length of the median is simply, write it out, it's the average of the bases. You simply average the bases. Or algebraically, the medium equals the length of one base plus the length of the other base over two. That should look shockingly familiar to you. The medium equals the average of the bases. Now let's put this to work. Okay, we're going to solve for x in this diagram. We're assuming that we have medians here. So just go ahead and add the hatch marks to reinforce that. That's a medium. Remember, when you write an equation, it's an equation has two sides with an equal sign. So when you write the medium equation, you don't just write this. It's base plus base over 2. That, my friends, is not an equation. That's an expression. Your equation is this. Medium equals base plus base over 2. Always write it two sides with an equal sign. Now, let's circle, plug, chug. Our median, we circle that word. Our medium is x. We're going to bring it right down there. That's x. Equals. Circle the word base. Come over here. We pick up the one base. That's 12.
We circle the other word base. We come over here. We pick that up, 26. And I even recommend you circle the 2 and make sure you get that 2 down there. You have a fraction and a whole number, so you put this over 1. Let's cross multiply. So I have 2 times x equals 12 plus 26. Twelve plus twenty-six is thirty-eight. Divided by two. X equals nineteen. So our medium equals nineteen. Ready? I'm gonna do B with you. All right, step one, label your mediums and your bases. That's a base. That's a base. That's your medium. You write your equation out, a median equals Okay, so we write our equation out. An equation has two sides. So you write out the word medium equals base plus base over two. Equations have two sides with an equal sign. Always write that medium equals base plus base over two. Very important. Now that you have the equation, let's circle plug up. Ready? Medium. Circle it. We actually have a medium this time. We're going to put the 24 right there. Equals. Base. Circle it. Pick it up. Plug it in. Plus base. Circle it. Pick it up. Plug it in. Over. I am going to even circle the 2 so you don't forget it. Over 2. Now we put this over 1, cross multiply. We're going to end up with 2 times 24 equals x plus 35. Forty eight equals X plus thirty five. And X, which is your base, is thirteen. Which makes sense. Let's do a little check here. Let's do thirteen plus thirty five over 2. This is 48 over 2, which is 24, and there's your check. I'd like you to take a stab at this one on your own. Pause the video, do your own work, and then come back. Pause the video, do your own work, and then come back. All right, let's see how you did. Did you actually pause the video and try this yourself, or are you just waiting to copy? You didn't pause. Pause now. Do your own work. This is medium. Equals. Space. Plus the base over 2. Now we circle plug chug with the equation. Our medium is 20 equals 1 base. That's 5x minus 15 plus the other base. That's 2x minus 8. We're going to cross multiply and we're going to solve. Cross multiply. I end up with 2 times 20 equals 
5x minus 15 plus 2x minus 8. Let's collect like terms. This ends up being 40 equals, we have 5x and we have 2x, so that's 7x. We have negative 15 minus 8. That's going to be minus 23. Our goal is to solve for x, so we're going to plug in 20, plus 23 both sides. We end up with 63 equals 7x. Divide by 7, and x equals 9. Now, actually plug it in and see if this works. It's what's really nice about these, you can always check it. So 5 times 9 is 45, minus 15, that's 30. 2 times 9 is 18, minus 8, that's 10. 30 plus 10 over 2. That's 40 over 2. Lo and behold, you know you're right. Now, the other shape we're going to learn about today is a kite. So, what we have here is we have a rhombus on a left and a kite on a right. I want you to take about a, a minute or two and ask yourself this. If this is a rhombus on the left and a kite on the right, ask yourself, how are they different? Okay, I'd like you to draw it in the diagonals here on the rhombus. We're going to need them. How are they different? And how are they similar? So I'm going to set the timer for two minutes. I would like you to fill that out on your own. I will not give you the answer there. I'd like you to write at least one way how they are different and at least one way how they are the same. You have two minutes. Alrighty, hopefully you found a few items and wrote them down yourself. Now, some qualities of kites. Qualities of kites. By definition, a kite has consecutive congruent sides. So, opposite sides are not equal, but consecutive sides are. That's the main definition of a kite. Additional qualities is the fact, just like if you were to build a kite, the crossbars, make a right angle. 
And given this information, we're supposed to find all possible segment length, side length, and angle measures. Now, a kite, qualities of a kite. Um, the kite, this, the long side does bisect these corners. However, it does not bisect these corners or be a rhombus. A kite also is cut in half at the, at the short crossbar. So if that's five, that's five. But in the long crossbar, that's not cut in half. So we already have the five there. So look what we have. We want to find segment length. So lo and behold, we have ourselves a right triangle, which means we can use the Pythagorean theorem. We just found one side length here as being 13. So that's 13, which means this is 13. We can use the Pythagorean theorem because we have two sides and we need a third side. So we're going to go 6 squared plus 5 squared equals unknown squared. Sixty-one equals unknown squared. We square root both sides. This one you can go ahead and get a decimal. We have seven point eight. So we used Pythagorean theorem to find this side and this side. Now we've gone and we've found all the segment lengths and the side lengths. We're missing angles. Remember, we have a right triangle here. Let me pull it out so you can see it. We have a right triangle. And this is 5, this is 12, and this is 13. We're going to find this angle right here. We're going to call this our theta. So from there, we label our opposite our adjacent, and our hypo. We're looking for an angle, so we're going to use inverse sine or inverse cosine or inverse tangent. And because we have all three sides, we can actually use any one of those. When I have a choice, I tend to default to um, sine. Or you can use tangent. I'm going to use tangent this time. So to find theta, we're going to do inverse tangent opposite over adjacent equals theta. Our opposite is 5, our adjacent is 12. That's going to give us our angle theta. We do 5 divided by 12, inverse tangent, round to the nearest whole degree, we're going to get 23 degrees there. That gives us 23. Now you can just walk it around. If that's 23, this is 23. Now this is not a parallelogram, so opposite angles are not equal. But what we do know is since we have a right triangle here, we can find this simply by doing 90 minus 23. And we get 67. And these triangles are equal on either side. So if that's 67, this is 67. Now I've got to be really careful because these corner angles right here, they are not cut in half. This is not a rhombus. So to get this angle over here, 
we are going to use inverse tan as well. Except this time our opposite is 6 and our adjacent is 5. So I'm going to go 6 divided by 5, inverse tangent. Run it to the nearest whole degree. That's 50 degrees. That means that's 50. The upper and bottom triangle are equal. That's 50. That's a right angle, which means this right here is 40, because 40 plus 50 is 90. And that is how you find everything in a kite.